So this is my video on basic introductions in Spanish, introducciones, how to introduce yourself and others with simple information. Okay, so we'll have a look at introductions and greetings to start with. So we could have hola, hi or hello, hola, good morning, buenos días, good afternoon or good evening, buenas tardes, buenas tardes, and good night, buenas noches. Note here that it's buenos días. The word día, although it's got an A on the end here, is actually irregular, so it's mas and it's masculine. So we have buenos días, and the OS relates to that fact that this is masculine plural. Buenas for tardes, because tarde is feminine, and it's also plural, and the same for noches as well. So buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches. And then adios, goodbye. Now in Spain, if you don't have time to speak to somebody, that's what you'd say. You'd go past and say adios, rather than say hi like we do in England. So adios, goodbye, and hi as well if you don't, you haven't got time to speak to somebody. Okay, so those are our greetings. So, como te llamas? What's your name? Como te llamas? And we'd answer, me llamo, and then your name. Me llamo, or you could say, mi nombre es, my name is, or my first name is, mi apellido es, my surname is. Y tú, so rather than repeat the question again, we could just say, y tú, and you. Note the accent on the tú, um, if you don't put the accent on it, it becomes your, instead of you. So, y tú. So we've got me llamo, my name is, or literally I am called, or I call myself. And we've got in the question, te llamas, your name is singular. So I'm saying you're singular because this is when you're talking to one person. So como te llamas, what's your name and when you're talking to one person. Then we could change it a little bit. And if you're talking about other people, se llama, his or her or its name is. Or if you're being formal, this would also mean your name is to somebody that you don't know very well, but one person, so that's why it's singular. We are called, nos llamamos, we are called. You call, you are called plural, but informal. So you were talking about lots of people. Os llamáis. And the last one, se llaman, they are called. Or if you're being formal to lots of people, your name is, and they're plural formal. So, you notice that the beginning bits change and the end bits change as well. But you can insert these into the question at the top here. So, if you want to say, what is his name? Como se llama? Como se llama? What is her name? Como se llama? Como se llama? Or what is their name? Como se llaman? Como se llaman? And then we use the se llaman and se llama as part of our answer. And this verb is an AR verb. Most AR verbs in Spanish, um, you take the AR off of what's called the infinitive. So if we had the verb to be called, llamar, or to call, is, in, is the infinitive, um, to call. So we take the AR off and we put an O here. AS for the U form, A on the end for he, she, and it form, AMOS for the we form, ICE for the U plural form, and AN for the they form. If you want to know anything more about present tense verbs, then have a look at my video on that as well. Well, that will help you identify the endings of the verbs. This particular verb is a reflexive verb, so it literally means to call myself. And that, again, is another grammatical area, which if you have a look at my video, that might clarify that for you. But anyway, if we have a looking at simple introductions for the moment, ¿Cómo te llamas? is our question. ¿Cómo te llamas? Then our next question, ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estáis? ¿Cómo está usted? ¿Cómo están ustedes? So, how are you? ¿Qué tal? It's kind of informal. ¿Cómo estás? A little bit more formal, but to somebody you know, in, it's still informal, but to somebody you know and one person. ¿Cómo estáis? To somebody, to people that you know, um, plural this time. ¿Cómo está usted? Now I put usted in brackets because it's not used as much nowadays in Spain. But this is the formal you, singular. ¿Cómo está usted? And the 
sing and the plural formula uh, formula the plural formal um, you están and como están ustedes how are you I missed a question mark at the end but that should be there so we might say estoy when we use this verb we'll have a look at the verb in a minute but estoy meaning I am but this is for non-permanent states so you might not always be like this so estoy fantástico and if you're a girl you change the o to an a fantástica fenomenal again another way of saying fantastic or great fenomenal muy bien muy bien okay, I'm good good bien fine bien regular regular so so no muy bien not very good not well fatal awful so we'd say estoy fantástico or estoy bien okay so those that might be your answers and again you could say y tú or y usted depending on whether you're talking to somebody formal or informally so those are there y tú y usted again don't forget your accent otherwise it means you rather your rather than you and our key verb here is the verb estar, which is one of the verbs to, for meaning to be. There is another one, ser, but this is the one we use for this because it's for non-permanent states of being. So we have estoy, I am. And if you remember our IR verbs in the last slide, we know that these endings are similar, but they have, they have accents on some of them instead. So estoy, I am, estás, this is in our question up here, está. Estamos, estáis, and están. Now you have to remember your accents on some of these in particular. In particular, está, because if you remove the accent here, it becomes this rather than he or she or it is. So just be careful the accents there. Okay, so that's how, saying how what your name is, and now saying how you are, and asking other people that that question as well. ¿Cuántos años tienes? Now, obviously, you wouldn't ask this one too. Um, if you are adults, but if you're learning Spanish um, at school, then this is a really useful phrase to know. ¿Cuántos años tienes? Now in Spanish, you say how how old, how many years have you got? Not how many years are you or how old are you, the verb to be. In Spanish, we use the verb to have. So our answer, tengo, and then however many years, años. I am so many years, literally, I have so many years. Again, it's really important to have this tilde on the end here. So my students forget that because otherwise it means bottoms instead of years. So tengo whatever age años. If you're not very good with your numbers, have a look at my numbers video before we carry on with this one or after you've done this section. Then we could vary a little bit. Tenía, I used to be or I was so many años. Tenía, so last year for example I was. Or if we talk about the future, tendré, I will be, so many years. So remember, this is the verb to have. I have so many years. I had so many years. I will have so many years, literally. But in English, we translate it as I am, I, ha I was, and I will be for years only. So the key verb here is the verb tener, which literally means to have. It's a radical changing verb, so it goes from e to ie, which is where we get tienes from. But again, that's another grammatical error you might want to look at on another one of my videos. So we have tengo, tienes, tiene, tenemos, tenéis, tienen. Okay. So meaning you have have in this case, but when you use it with age, it means I am, it means the verb to be. So I am, you are, he, she, it is. I put is there, but actually what I meant to say was he, she, it has, and you have as well. So let's just change those. So that we've got that, have, has rather, and have. Okay. So we've got all of those. So, and then we have some adverbs of time which we could put with these sentences up here. El año próximo, or el año que viene, next year, or el año pasado. Okay, so that's age. Moving on to birthday, ¿cuándo es tu cumpleaños? So, mi cumpleaños, or sometimes the Spanish shorten it to cumple, 
Mi cumple es, o mi cumpleaños es, el 15 de septiembre. El 15 de septiembre. El 15th of September. So my birthday is on the 15th of September. Este año es un lunes. This year it's a Monday. This year it's on Monday. Es un lunes. Again, if you don't know your numbers or months or dates, or days of the week, have a look at my other video on that. And again, we could extend it. This year I will be. Tendré so many años. Or we could say, voy a cumplir. I'm going to be. Literally, I'm going to complete so many years. Voy a cumplir años. And again, we've got a future tense there. So one of our key things to this is our reflexive verb. So when is your birthday? Tu. My birthday. Mi. Again, if you want to learn more on this, have a look at my adjective section. But this is just a short, re a short section on this. So we have mi, which is my. Tu, without an accent, is your singular. Su, his, her, or its, or your formal singular. Nuestro, our. Vuestro, your. And su for there, or your formal plural. So we could say, when is his birthday? Su cumpleaños, instead of saying me. Su cumpleaños es el, and the date. Okay. Or, when is our birthday? Nuestro cumpleaños es el. E, and you could change it, you could carry it on. If you're twins, obviously, you'd say the same. Okay, so those are possessive adjectives. So let's have some practice. So this is a challenge one, and a simple version. Pause it now, have a go, and then we'll go over the answers. We just need to put it into Spanish. Okay, so the answers. Hola, ¿cómo te llamas? Buenos días. Remember, it's buenos días, not buenas. Me llamo, whatever your name is, y tú, with the accent on. Mi nombre es, now I put mi nombre es here, but you could have put me llamo as well. ¿Qué tal? Or you could say, ¿cómo estás? Because we're being informal here. Estoy bien, I'm fine. ¿Y tú? Estoy fenomenal. ¿Cuántos años tienes? Tengo 14 años. ¿Y tú? Remember your tilde above the N as well. And what it means otherwise. Tengo 13 años. ¿Cuándo es tu cumpleaños? Mi cumple, I've changed it to cumple, but it could be cumpleaños. Es el 25 de noviembre. It's always good if you're not very good with your numbers is to write them out in full. And so you get used to the numbers in that format. But you can write in figures. Y voy a cumplir 15 años. I'm going to be, or I'm going to complete 15 years. Okay, so that's challenge one. Challenge two, desafia dos. Slightly shorter, but this time we're going to be formal. So pause it now, have a go, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so, buenas tardes, remember buenas, because this is feminine. ¿Cómo se llama? What is your name? And this time we're being formal, so not como te llamas, but pero como se llama. Me llamo, it's very easy. And you, this time we're using usted, y usted. My name is, again I put mi nombre es, but you could have put me llamo. And como esta, how are you? You could add the usted at the end. Como esta usted? And then easy, estoy bien. Instead of y tú, we've got usted. I'm good. Estoy bien. Okay, so, last practice. Challenge three, a little bit more of everything. Pause it now and we'll go over the answers. Okay, so, buenas tardes, remember buenas tardes. Como te llamas, because we're being informal, but you could say como se llama, possibly. Although you probably wouldn't ask them their age later on. Um, hola, me llamo, y tú, remember your accent. Mi nombre es, y tu amigo, and your friend. Remember, it's your this time and not you, so we have no accent. Se llama, his name is. ¿Qué tal? You could have had, ¿Qué, ¿cómo estás? Estoy regular, y tú. Estoy bien. ¿Cuántos años tienes? Remember your accent on the end. Tengo 14 años. Y tú, and you, and then we change it to your again, your friends, no accent, tu amigo. Tengo 13 años. Y mi amigo tiene, my friend has, so many years, so you need to make that part of it. 15. ¿Cuándo es tu cumple? Mi cumpleaños es el 30 de enero. Tendré 15 años. Y este año es un dom domingo. Okay, so I hope you've got it there. Go through it again if you're not sure.